Thank you for checking out my tutorial on how to change a GFCI. Now the only tools you need for this project are a flathead screwdriver and a digital voltmeter. Remember, safety first. So the first thing you want to do is locate the breaker that controls that GFCI. Once you locate it, shut that breaker off. This will render the outlet safe to work on. Before removing this GFCI, double check to make sure the power has been shut off. You do this by taking the red and black leads and insert them into the vertical slots on the outlet. If your meter stays at zero volts, power has been shut off and you are now ready to remove the outlet from the wall. Remove the set screws that hold the face plate against the outlet. You'll notice there's two small set screws, one on the top and one on the bottom. Once you remove these two screws, gently try and pull the face plate off the outlet. If it's stuck, take your flathead screwdriver and gently tug up underneath the face plate and it'll pop right off. Now if you'll notice, you'll see two more screws that hold the outlet to the outlet box. These two screws need to be removed in order for the GFCI outlet to come away from the outlet box. Now once these two screws have been removed, gently grab the top and bottom ears of the GFCI and pull it away from the wall exposing the wiring and the terminals on the sides of the outlet. Now that you've exposed the outlet, now it's time to remove the wires from the GFCI. Now before you do this, double check and make sure you mark your wires for line and load. It is very important that when you put this outlet back in, that line and load go in their correct spots. Before you install the new GFCI, look on the back of the unit. You'll notice it says line and load. It is very important, as I stated earlier, that you put the correct wiring in the correct spots. Now the line side will be the side where the voltage is constant, the voltage that comes directly from the breaker box. The load wiring, in this case, will be the dead wires, the wires that don't currently have any voltage on them at all. Now say you happen to forget to mark the wires line and load, and you need to find out which ones are which. Well this process is simple. Turn the breaker back on, and with your digital meter, physically touch each wire like I show here in the video. One set will show zero volts, the other set will show up to 120 volts. Once you've ensured that the power is turned off, the first thing you want to do is take the bare copper grounding wire and terminate that to the green grounding screw on the GFCI. next step is to get the white and black wires of the line. Now if you have to, bend these copper wires straight again so that way they'll insert straight into the holes on the GFCI. Now take your white wire and insert it under the silver terminal on the line side of the GFCI. Turn the GFCI over and now take the black wire and insert it under the gold terminal on the line side of the GFCI. Tighten it down, make sure the connections are snug. Now you're ready to install the load wiring on the GFCI. Now take the black wire and insert it under the load gold terminal of the GFCI. Make sure that terminal is tightened down and then you can move on to the white wire. Flip the GFCI over, take the white wire and insert it under the silver load terminal of the GFCI. Make sure that terminal is tightened down and then double check them just to be sure that they're snug. Now that we've got our wiring straightened out, the last step in this process is to just reinsert the GFCI into the outlet box. Once you do that, reinstall the two set screws that hold the GFCI into the outlet box.
final step in this process is to reinstall the faceplate on the GFCI. Take your two small set screws and reinsert them through the faceplate to hold it against the GFCI. Once you've completed this process, you have successfully changed and reinstalled a GFCI. Once you've got the GFCI installed, go back to your breaker panel and turn the breaker back on. In this example, you'll see that I have a yellow indicator light that shows. That's telling me that there's power to the unit, but the GFCI has tripped. All you need to do is press the reset button and power will be restored. Then, you want to double check to make sure you have the proper voltage. So insert the probes into the vertical slots of the GFCI. The readings you should get should be up to 125 volts.